Good morning cellists. This is week 10 of our lockdown and it's also today a sunny bank holiday Monday and it's actually also the half term break in the academic term. Um, and all of these things put together I've decided that week 10 is for technicals. So I shan't be looking at a study or a repertoire piece this week but instead I should be just giving you short bite-sized morsels as we take a notional holiday <laughs> in our own homes. Um, but it's a chance just to sort of think of a few small nuggets and digest those and hopefully there's still plenty that you might be catching up on in the previous nine weeks. So to begin today's session, to what today's session will be, is going to be very much about um, the groundwork, the whole approach as your, your posture, um, and also uh, macro moves. We have touched lightly on those areas previously, um, but let's just reconsider them. So the first thing to do is to actually put your bow down. I might just put mine just behind me here. <clears throat> Make sure that you're very comfortably seated and that the spike is well secure. There's no chance of that sinking. Okay. Um, now, the things we're going to pay attention to is going to be the points of contact with the ground. Obviously, there's the spike. That is one element. There is also your feet. So at this moment, if you're sitting with your cello watching this video, this is the moment in which I would like you to wiggle your toes. Yes. And by doing so, with your feet flat on the floor, um, careful about the position of the feet so they won't be away from you we don't want an angle from the knee away from you and neither will they be tucked under the chair you're more or less looking at trying to have a pretty straight drop from the knee to the foot but it may be coming back a little tiny bit um, to give you a certain sense of balance you can pull your heels back a little so perhaps your knee is in line with the toes now ensuring that those feet are in that position, nice and flat on the floor, and this is the moment to again reassert wiggling your toes. Why? It's interesting that if you wiggle them, you suddenly then become actually aware of your feet and the soles contacting the floor, or the, the, con the feeling of your feet in your shoes. Um, most of the time, you know, our brain can ignore um, any signals about where your feet are, and we just take it for granted. But I want you to become aware of it, and by wiggling your toes, you've now reminded your brain where your feet are. And there they are, well supported by the ground or the floor, or the rug, whatever you've got underneath your feet, you are well supported. Um, and that can give you a sense of being um, letting go of some extra tension that may be there when you're sitting holding your instrument. Now let's move to the sitting bones. So where you're sat with your cello, you could just rock from side to side on your hip bones and again feel the support of the chair. Now if it's a bit creaky at this point you might like to consider a different chair. Um, uh, anyway, that's something for you to kind of uh, check over. Now in this demonstration so far I've just been sitting with the cello quite neatly near to my neck here and my hands mostly sitting on my knees, something balanced to take the weight away. But a, a more favourite um, stance is actually to cross my arms over like this, which we have touched on in um, perhaps week one of the lockdown. <clears throat> so in this um, posture of hugging your cello, and we will call it a cello hug, you'll notice that my hands come back over onto my arms. And as I previously have mentioned um, in previous class, this is so that you can feel the, your own body warmth back on your own arms. Now be careful, not too far up to the shoulder because you can see straight away I'm pulling in my muscle, my arms and my framework are coming in tight and narrow. If you keep the hands at about the elbow location, we're keeping more of a kind of square shape with the shoulder to the elbows and across at the arms. And that's going to help you keep a more open and relaxed shoulder. And we're really looking for macro points of structure and relaxation. Okay, so with your hands there, happily leaning on the cello shoulders, 
you let go of the sense of holding your arms. Just absolutely trust the cello to take the weight of your arms. It's absolutely no problem at all, as long as your spike is well secure and nothing was going to happen there. So now our sense of point of contact are the spike, your feet, your sitting bones, and of course your arms are nicely weighted upon the cello as a real tr tree point of rest and trust. And in a way, that's really what we are building when we are working with the instrument, is kind of a trust about where we shift to and feeling comfortable and relaxed and free to play. Now, whilst you're sitting in this posture and sort of feeling these points of contact and the kind of sense of, if you like, liberation that from the, the hip to the floor, you have pure real security and that your upper body is absolutely free to be working the instrument and we want to add, add into that your uh, acknowledgement and sense of breath so take a deep breath and take it in through the nose and out through the mouth as is often done for the relaxation classes so in, here we go in through the nose and out through the mouth now when you do that um, Permit the cello to move. You know, it's all too easy that where the cello makes contact with us, we stop sh and we shallow breathe, or we allow the instrument to prevent our rib cage from lifting and rising properly. So just try again and be aware of your instrument moving. Here we go. You might just see a little hint as if my own cello's ribs and lungs were moving there. So this is kind of now a, a whole sense that we have a sense of freedom of the breath and actually we are free of taking any kind of um, extra tension for holding our, our body in posture. And you are truly free now with your arms. We're going to now on an out breath um, open the arms and as I have done in the, uh, the early class in week one. And we will be opening them to a nice curved open posture, keeping your forearms at the um, elbow level. Don't rise them up or down and we don't want them too far out like this in a splayed fashion. We're going to keep a kind of a curvature like this. So starting where we were, we take the in-breath and on your out-breath you have opened your arms. If you like it's a greeting of the world. Hello world! And here we are open. Now you might momentarily, just whilst you're holding this posture, just for a little bit longer, looking at your bow arm, you could just twist at the elbow as if you were holding your bow. And with the left hand, we could just move the arm to the first position. And you see, my upper arms didn't move at all. And they're still in symmetrical balance from the original opening stance. Let's just see that in a quick motion. I was closed. I opened, keeping the forearm at the elbow level. I twist and twist. I mean, they're twisting in different directions, the elbows, but basically there's a real core, true balance to our both of our arms, even though they feel very obviously distinctly different in what we do with them. There is something fundamental about a balance there, and we need to keep that balance. And keeping your shoulders nice and low, try not to twist your body so that you wouldn't want to be bowing out and pulling your shoulder this way, nor twisting it this way when you're working an instrument in, in the um, farther reaches of the instrument. So there's something to kind of really consider in the whole posture and your whole body, mind and breath being involved with the instrument. And when you kind of just take a little bit of time to do that, you should feel um, a, a sense of relaxation, a sense of support and freedom. So that you're really truly free to move around the instrument as you wish bit of air cello there. <clears throat> that will bring me on to the other two macro moves that we're going to include in today's short technical class. And they both uh, relate to each hand. So as we've uh, still got the bow resting, um, my bow hand is going to rest. Logical plays pop it on the knee so that you just take away any sense of weight. And we're going to look at the left hand. And initially, we're going to do a little soft fist. So there we are, I've tucked my thumb inside there. Not too tight like this. Keep it a little bit relaxed, a little bit open, soft. So nothing too over tense. 
and that I'm going to be trying to place the first knuckle area right on the middle two strings as if they were on a little train track there and if I go right back to the nut which is the where the strings just come over the top of the peg box there I'm taking my hand right back to that nut which is obviously a little too far compared to where we normally play because at half position we might be here and I've gone a little bit as you can see from my arm a little bit further back and what we're focusing on is a nice open uh, angle underneath the arm there that I, I've got a, a straight wrist there so, so from my knuckles here through to the elbow there's a nice um, fairly straight arm there and with your breath you can traverse the length of the fingerboards so you're sitting resting on the two middle strings nicely balanced and here we go Now that way round, I was breathing in as I went down and out when I went back. You could do it the other way round. So I'll breathe in first. And it's fine to do both those. I think uh, you might just instinctively do what comes naturally to you. Or you might like to experiment with a sense of breathing in as we rise in the pitch of the instrument, obviously we're falling to the floor. And take in the, take up the breath the other direction on the reverse. And this trajectory is the macro move of our arm, without any fingers being present really. It's just like a whole unit. To feel that whole unit and to feel how easy that is to move past what we know is it can be a tricky stretch getting from the fourth into the upper positions here. But this, if we are clearing the shoulder with a sort of a slightly raised wrist compared with here, you can see how easy that is. The next step of the same exercise that we keep the sense of ease here will be to take your thumb out and put it straight behind the back of your finger knuckles. I'll show you what I mean. So it was in here and I'm just putting it out straight and as we know that that straight um, configuration is what we would do if we're doing a thumb position work. There it is. But we're still maintaining the soft fist with the straight thumb behind it and you can do the same thing with your breath gliding seamlessly um, backwards and forwards right the nut now when you go back to the nut it's very easy if you're not paying attention to um, stop the elbow moving as you're coming into the lower positions and be trying to push back on the elbow towards the nut like this now that's not what this exercise is that is absolutely going against the grain and I want you to be aware that the elbow will lead you to the nut there. And that the sense of opening out and pulling back with your whole upper arm um, is really vital so that when we have um, shifting where we're going from a higher position to the half, if you notice there, you know, my elbow, if I'm exaggerating a little bit, um, will lead that, which means a much swifter, cleaner, accurate shift back into the lower positions going against gravity. So we can already be aware of that in this move, that the elbow and the upper arm will come back and they will pull the hand with them. Don't push back on the elbow joint, but this instead. And you can see something about the sort of openness that we're perhaps experiencing with this <coughs> cross over the arms. You could potentially actually put both arms together and do it in a sort of symmetric way. I mean, a little bit of a problem there because you can't go quite far enough up straight. So that's um, the second portion of our macro move. The next, it won't surprise you, we're going to get the fingers out. I would suggest you do this somewhere around maybe the fifth position. Maybe not quite as high as thumb position because we're starting to lose some of the um, arm shape and I'd quite like you to keep it fairly straight. So around about fourth or fifth position, we've still got the thumb straight and the knuckles on the instrument. And just pop three fingers on the G string there. Um, I'm suggesting G rather than D because again if you just look it just helps us to keep this really nice easy comfortable hand shape. Now don't worry if you are still in your intermediary stages of learning of the cello and you haven't actually gone into thumb position yet you can still do this exercise and get a feeling for what it is like to move into the upper register. So I just have three fingertips on the G string and my thumb is still sitting straight Across the two middle strings, maybe the thumbnail just about touching or getting close to the C string, and that's a good location. 
In terms of distance, if I just fall, fall back here, they are a fairly equal distance there, that you don't want your thumb too far away from fingers, and neither is it going to be touching the first finger. It'll be about a tone behind the first finger. And in due course, we might be looking at exactly why that is and how useful it is. Not today. So we have our three fingers on the, the G string and the thumb, of course, D and G. I'm not putting my little finger down because if I were to try and reach around to do that, I'm distorting the hand shape and it's not going to help us with the freedom that I want you to understand. And as you will know, if you're already working in these registers, that um, we don't typically use the little finger. We can, and there are definitely times when we can use it, but generally we don't. Um, and it's about obviously the arm shape and efficiency of movement. Um, so taking these three fingers and thumb, we can then slide up and down the same area, including going way back to the nut there. And in case you haven't come across it, um, we will use thumb uh, in these lower positions if you're doing an octave, octave scales, or ba -da -di -da 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 -da, something that's perpetually using the octave rather than a huge stretch and a strain, we do use the thumb. So it is uh, something that we uh, practice and use. Um, we're just going slightly excessive and I'm taking the thumb right back to the nut to really exaggerate the feeling of the move of the open arms coming right back there, which is really important to feel it and feel all our boundary perimeters. So then we have the swoop, as we will call it, um, with the fingers and the thumb. And we can move backwards and forwards very lightly. That There's no pressure here. We're touching the string, but we're not pressing. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. The, the next stage of this um, practice for a sense of freedom and independence would be to just to pat a pit pat your fingers like this whilst you slide backwards and forwards. So that would be the next element of can you maintain the sense of ease whilst you pit pat your fingers. Okay, there you are. Left hand macro moves in the form of a swoop in its different guises, as I mentioned. Fist, soft fist, same with the thumb out, same with the fingers on, and then pitter patter fingers. There you are. Now, the right arm, uh, we're also going to look at the macro move of the right arm, and that's the full extension across all the strings. And for this, obviously, we need our bows back, um, and we are going to use what we call a wave right across the strings. So we're sitting at the heel on the C string, and we're looking to try and have a perpendicular or a right angle with that string from the hair. So if you need to, you can just move around to the edge of your cello and just check that you've got a nice right angle there. Um, it will look, as it does in this video, as if I'm pointing a ridiculous long way away from uh, the, the instrument and from myself, and it looks like a peculiar angle. That's because we're on a curve. Don't be put off, this is the right angle. Um, at the moment I'm sitting with full flat hair on the string. And the things I want you to become aware of then would be actually then to let go a bit of the elbow, become a little uncellistic if you like, but allow yourself to go beyond what's our normal posture in order to really understand where's a good place to begin the weight. So this is a little bit probably too low, you know. Um, I'm really trying to drag my hand arm weight off the bow. And then I'll just rise it a little bit. I don't need it very much and I just want to feel my natural arm weight in the string here. Um, and initially you could just play a C string so that we feel this angle. Breathe. Now within that stroke, which I think I have covered briefly uh, in week one or two, uh, we are looking at um, come, trying to be louder at the point but that we are using a forearm muscle to do that, not leverage. So don't want to be pushing your elbow up and pressing down upon the string. Keep your natural arm weight on the string, in the string by keeping your elbow in a fairly low, relaxed posture. Go with your breath. As you pull your arm out it will rise and change shape but just don't forget don't leave it there when you come back to the heel but drop it back down 
So that's a kind of an in, initiate, initial um, sound production and feeling of natural arm weight, which leads quite well after our cello hugs. And, and then in terms of the whole trajectory of the macro state, if you like, of our arm, we're looking at the big curve that goes against this small curve here. The big sort of silent curve is if I hold my bow with both hands, tip and heel, um, and I move across the strings without touching them, you see, um, to the point that in order to get a right angle here, I'm fully extended with this arm. And when I'm at the right place here, I'm fully extended with the other arm. And that if you quickly move from one to the other, you can start to feel drawing a large counter arc here in the air, um, across from where the cello arc is of the strings here. Now let's just play it up. So we're at the heel, right angle. We're right at the point, flat hair, again, fully extended arm in order to be at a right angle, and back. This very simple move can be really useful because we're really looking all the time at however wherever you are on the instrument we will always be looking at parts of that curvature that we are exploring with the simple wave. Now the other thing I want you to be mindful of is it's very easy to go up like this you know, you do that without thinking. But when you come down, have a little bit more conscious thought about what's happening with your arm. If you just come back down without thinking, what's going to happen is your hand is leading the drop. But that's not as well seated as if your elbow leads it. So from the point, your elbow will drop a little bit earlier than the hand. So it slightly preempts the descent. And that way, you already have arm weight in place. So immediately the cello should speak really, really well. And for the final one, we dropped before you play the string and then your arm weight is ready to get good speech. And that's all it is, it's really simple. So macro moves, left hand swoops and right hand waves. And of course we began this little technical for week 10 with the cello hug and your breath. Great, have a good day and I shall see you tomorrow with a different technical tip for week 10.